so the first question of this week was uh, I, these always qu these questions always come to me in kind of groups. It's really weird. It's like this cosmic, you know, monkeys on the island learning how to use tools type idea. Um, this idea that uh, you know questions come to me in certain doses. And the question that came, I got two questions. One was from a, the actual goalie. Uh, the other one was from a parent of a goalie who was getting a little frustrated with just this idea of like, you know, everybody telling their goalie to tweak their stance. And for these two goalies, one was uh, 16. The other one is 13, I believe. And uh, different parts of the country, too, which is kind of neat. But um, they had gone to camps this summer and they had gotten reviews by the clinics that they had gone to. And and um, and the, the irony was one of them got a review and it wasn't even from a coach who had actually been a goalie just someone who had been shot shooting on goalies for a long time and annie wallagowski if you're listening it sounds a lot like the the, the email you sent me but um the idea was that uh, the, these goalies were getting frustrated with just these recommendations on how to tweak their stance and one of the things that uh, that we've seen and i've been very critical of as it's kind of percolated as, as it's kind of infected field across is this like wide-footed stance and the bottom hand like across the body underneath the top hand um, and so, so I'll get into that in a little bit more detail, but a lot of you guys know my take on that already, but I will clarify. Um, but so, so the current lacrosse goalie stances that we're seeing, uh, in my opinion, just don't make sense. And they don't make sense when you hold them up against athletic stance principles in other sports. Okay. So if you have a coach and they're saying like, oh, your goalie needs to widen out their feet. Uh, and then that same coach may be complain to your goalie that they don't attack the ball enough they can't move to the ball well we're i'm going to explain why that's the case so the the there's some there's some instagram coaches that have really perpetuated this like cesspool of stant lacrosse goalie stance and it it, it really bothers me to be honest because it's 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 not been checked it doesn't make sense and we see goalies in college getting lit up with that stance what's interesting is when you watch the pros you see a lot of the more successful goalies migrating back to more uh, uh, what is more a more conventional uh, athletic principles. Let's put it that way. OK, so you don't have to look too far to see good athletic stance, you know, and, and w one of the places I tell everybody to look first, whether you like the sport or not. OK, this is really important. You know, there's a lot of coaches out there that are just like diehard lacrosse coaches and that's their thing. And um, and they don't watch other sports, and they've literally have forgotten, you know what it's what it what it takes to be athletic. And and so, I like watching football, right? Now I didn't play football. I love the athleticism in football. Years ago, when I had my strength and conditioning business, you know the the you know football, the NFL starting tonight, um, is uh, is a really great example of multi million dollar athletes uh, being supported. Right. And what I mean by that is that there's a lot of money, there's a lot of research, there's a lot of merchandise being sold, there's a lot of money around the sport to to go like, okay, how do we make these athletes faster, right? Bigger, faster, stronger. And so looking at football is probably a great place to start. And so what I tell my goalies to look at is those offensive linemen, usually, because offensive, not defensive linemen, because defensive linemen are rushing, and so they're leaning forward. Offensive linemen have to get up out of a stance and get into their athletic positioning. Okay, to be able to then defend against a pass rush, like a big, large anger man running at them. Right. And so if they lean forward, they're quickly uh, shot around. If they lean too far back, they're run over. Uh, if that defensive player who's trying to attack the quarterback, you know, jukes left, jukes right, that offensive lineman has to have their hands up, their hips underneath them in a, in a stance so that they can move. And their feet have to be just wide enough, but not too wide for their stance and their body and their movement okay now i'm gonna couple that okay i'm gonna couple that with an idea that um that with a, a concept that i saw actually today on tiktok i follow um uh, pitching experts on tiktok and also catching experts on tiktok and that's kind of cool because what ends up happening is uh, you start hearing you know certain concepts of other of other um of other sports. And one of the things that's really kind of fascinating is that in catching in baseball, there is a lazy catcher problem. Okay. And I had heard about this about five or six years ago, but it was really interesting to see a TikTok today about a guy where um, 
where they were like, okay. And, and, and what the, the catcher had done is the catcher had kind of gone down to one knee. And that's okay in certain pitch if certain pitches are coming from the pitcher. But what was really interesting is that this uh, this pitch this catching coach diagnosed how if a catcher adopts that stance, okay. Now, how they stand is, is irrelevant. It's just this concept of when they adopt a certain stance, this kind of knee down. He mar- he he made with little like angry faces. He's like a catcher can't get to this ball, and they can't get to that ball. And I thought, isn't that interesting? Because I believe hundred percent that lacrosse goalies that stand too wide. Um, even if they stand kind of naturally, as I will tell you uh, in a moment, like kind of what that means, um, you know, if we're trying to catch everything with our stick, that we can't get to certain balls, right? We can't get to off stick low. We have a hard time getting off stick hip, um, especially if we have to rotate the stick. Um, but the idea is that, you know, there's just certain balls you can't get to and that's a problem, right? That's a problem. So, so what I want you to understand is that, is that as a lacrosse goalie, we don't want our goalie to take themselves out of the running to make a save because they're trying to adopt a stance that's not theirs. Okay. So the wide footed stance, I'm not a fan of the bottom hand across the body, not a fan of. And, uh, and so I'm going to explain what's up. So, so your goalie, okay. Your goalie, um, your goalie is, has their own athletic window okay now what i mean by that is that is that no matter what your athlete's age okay so we're talking about like chronological age uh your athlete is going to have a strength level to them okay so this can vary like so if you're if you're goalie's been a lacrosse goalie for a really long time or 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 maybe they and they've only played lacrosse and they haven't really developed a lot of good solid athletic ability um then uh they're going to be limited okay but what 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 happens here is that when you look at other sports there is a concept where in a range of motion okay so let me just give you some, some examples so like if you're doing a bench press right there's a range of motion, right? The bars at your chest, that's the one end range. Your arms are extended, that's another end range. Uh, same thing goes true with a, uh, with a squat. You stand up under the bar, that's the top of the range. You squat down as far as you can comfortably go, and that will be the bottom of your range. What's really interesting is that is that within that range, though, as you start to load up the bar, so if there's no weight on that, you can bench you can squat the full range pretty easy okay but when you start to load up that bar okay then what happens is you you will find what's you you'll find an athlete's sticking point so uh when so for example like if i if i take a bar and i bench press and i try to get that bar off my chest but i stall at the chest that means uh like coming off my chest that means that my pecs the, the muscles across the front of my chest are weak uh, some athletes can get the bar off their chest, but then they'll get like halfway up and then they'll, they'll stall there. And what's interesting there is that's where the, 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 as, as the angles go, the chest then gives way to now more work from the triceps, which is that smaller muscle in the backside of your, of your arm. Well, that's obviously a much smaller muscle, right? So to get through that point, an athlete either needs to accelerate the bar and use momentum so that the the triceps have less work to do and they can kind of get through that point and get the arms extended uh either that or you're um you're just kind of you know you're kind of hooped right like so so uh the the point is is that as the angles change the the levers change and then therefore the weight changes okay so uh years ago when i was trying to become a bobsledder like an olympic bobsledder i'd gone to the olympics for luge and and late in my 30s i was going to try to make the olympic team and i almost did but i was trying to get as big and fast and strong and heavy as i could so i started powerlifting and i learned a lot of this powerlifting because what was really fascinating is like you see guys powerlifting and they actually wear equipment that that helps them through certain ranges it makes it easier now what happens is when you look at angles if I take your athlete, their base athletic stance, okay, this is my way to find your goalie's base athletic stance. It's throw the stick away for a second. And what you're going to do is you're going to have them stand on a spot and you're going to have them jump three times straight up and down. Jump, jump, jump. On the third landing, okay, 
you're going to give them a cue to run to, to sorry to shuffle one way or the other okay so so the your goalie knows this they're like okay here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna have you dump three times and when you land on the third one i'm gonna shoot my arm out like one of my arms out and you're gonna jump you're gonna run in that direction you're, you're gonna shuffle in that direction okay so what you'll find is that so you'll do that like maybe three or four times have your goalie jump and give them a cue and off they go okay and they're shuffling they're not turning and sprinting they're shuffling now on the so what I want you, the best thing to do here is to video this. Okay. And so what you'll do is you'll have them do that three or four times. And then what will happen is you will uh, now take the video and pause it on that last jump that they do. Wherever their feet land is their, na their, their natural athletic positioning. Okay. And so I guarantee you, it won't be as wide as a lot of lacrosse goalies you see standing. Okay. And why is that? Well, the body is just trying to find its mo its strongest point to be able to do what you're about to ask it to do, which is shuffle right or left. Right. So, so that is, that is very similar to, um, you know, if you're standing there and you're trying to explode laterally, right or left, that's the key. That's the key is that your body will always go to where it feels strongest. Now, what's what's really fascinating is like if you've ever had a kid try to do a push up. OK, now this is very apparent with girls more than boys, but it's it happens for both. But if you have a young athlete do a push up, OK, their hands will start to come like way up by their face. Right. So they'll come way up by their face. And this is not a very it's not, it's where they feel strongest, but what's, what's interesting is that it's not where they are actually have, they're utilizing the most muscle to move. So when you take a young athlete and you teach them how to push up and they start to push up like this and their elbows are out real wide, they feel like that's where they should be strongest, but it's in fact, not where they're going to end up being the most powerful as they get stronger. Okay. Um, so, so what happens there is like, if I take a young athlete and then I teach them how to properly do a push up, at, at first they don't like it. They might get pinned to the floor because their chest is so weak and their triceps are strong on them. Well, so, but, so that's where a little bit of patience has to happen. You go, okay, wait a second. We're going to have to teach you how to do this. And so we're going to have to get to a progression to find your, uh, so, so that's the reason why I share that with you is that's an example where a young athlete will migrate to where they feel strongest, but it's actually incorrect. OK, and what's, you know, if your athlete does this, ask them, like, if you were going to punch somebody, would you how would you punch them? Would you punch them like this? Eee! Right. And I, for those of you listening on, you know, iTunes right now, uh, I've got my hands up on my face and I'm kind of doing a jab from there. There's no power. You're going to come like up from like a 45 degree angle up from the chest and boom, power that way. So an athlete quickly starts to understand like, OK, that's my more natural athletic position. That's where I'm going to be the most powerful. So let's work that. OK, so when you add those two kind of examples together, the the, the three hop or the four hop test, um, shuffle test, and then you tell them, you know, teach them how to push up, things like that. You'll find that it, a, a, a natural athletic ability comes in somewhere in that range. So now if you take your if you take your goalie. And you have them do three big hops and you say, okay, listen, the last, you can mark the field. You can say, okay, li listen, last time you landed here, you know, and you're going to mark the grass, like, or, or where are the turf where their feet landed now mark a line like wider than that, you know, and, and say, okay, on that, I want you to jump and land there. You will instantly see your athletes slow down. Right. And when they when you give them that cue to shuffle, when they land, you'll see a hesitation. OK, now that is the same thing that happens where if you take an athlete and teach them how to squat. OK, so I can take an athlete and teach them how to squat. But if I drop their hips to like if I have them drop their hips too low, then what happens is the leverage changes. And when the leverage changes, they lose their strength, that strength curve. Okay. And in squatting, just so you guys can do just for your own fun information, it's kind of the line where it, it, there's, there's a crease in your hip. Like, so as you're, if you're watching me and you're sitting down, you know, and you put your, you put your finger like right where the, in the hip, the, the, the crease of your hip, it's when that 
that line drops below the top of the knee. Because what ends up happening is that when the when that drops below the top of the knee, now there's a lot of stress on the on the quadricep and the patella tendon and things like that. I won't get too technical on you, but that's where um, that's where weakness really starts to happen. The leverage totally changes. So when we see athletes in these really wide stances, they're stable, right? They're stable, and they might be able to jump, might be able to move vertically, but they're not going to be able to move laterally. Okay. Now the interesting thing is, so it was, uh, someone sent me a video of a goalie, uh, training, I won't say where, but, uh, this goalie was really tall and the goalie was basically standing. The shots were coming from right out front as always about 15 yards straight out front. And that goalie was standing as wide as they possibly could like the, and this was, and I watched a couple of these videos and I was like, there, this isn't a joke. Uh, and I, there may have been a shovel involved, but, um, but I was like, this is just, stupid because uh this goalie has no strength to move anywhere and that's a problem okay so so when it comes to what does your goalie need to tweak so back to the what started this whole discussion was these goalies going like i'm sick of this and the parent going like i'm sick of this what's the deal well this is the deal your goalie has to find their their strength window okay and and it doesn't matter if your goalie is college age or if they're six, they will have a window. And if you want to see something kind of fun, there's a, if you look at ice hockey goalies training at different ages, you'll see young goalies who try to adopt like a butterfly stance. They flop like a rag doll and they don't have the strength to get up. And you'll see them like try to try to, they'll, their, their body will do whatever they can to kind of get up and move. They're outside their window. They're outside that user or the other term is an envelope. It's like you have this envelope with which to work in. And if you're outside that envelope, you lose all your strength and your mobility, right? So when I see wide stances, most goalies, like 99% of them are outside of that window, okay? Um, when you see stiff upper arms, like the top, the, the bottom arm is, uh, is completely extended and that elbow is almost straight, that's outside of a window of strength. Like you can't move effectively from there. And when we're trying to be as explosive as possible, then you, you, you come into that, you know, where your, your, your envelope resides. You look at boxers, right? If, if, if a boxers were strong way out here, they'd be punching with like a straight arm. We'd have like the Bruce Lee one inch punch stuff. Right. Um, but the truth is you see where, where does a boxer start from? Those arms are like in, you know, that glove is like here. Um, now, I, th I think the general rule is for a goalie to move effectively is to be kind of, you know, kind of hands all the way out and at least halfway back, even just a little bit more, just so you're not hitting the front of the visor or the front of the mask when you're when you're taking that stick across. And remember, I, I like I don't use terms like punch the ball, like punch to the ball, because then you're coming out or reinforcing out. It's really we're moving on plane. And that's a very small movement. I see goalies making these massive, exhaustive moves, and it's not good. Like, it's not good. So so, so the tweaks that are going to make the biggest difference for your goalie is this. One, first, get their feet to a point underneath them where they are at their strongest. Okay? Do the jump test that I explained, and, um, and you'll find it. And now what happens there is now the feet will be narrower and that then gives, you know, if we're shooting on them from straight out front, that gives a lot of room between the right and the left foot and the post, right? So this is inherent. This is a problem to me where when goalies sit way back in the cage and they, they can't get to that low ball, they have to come forward. They have to come out. So anybody still coaching goalies to step back in the cage are wrong in my opinion. And I'll show a video here like, of, um, of a PLL goalie who's actually a goalie coach um, getting schooled because they're too deep. Okay. Uh, so the, the first thing is getting the feet under the underneath them. Also that, that j just in general, that will make the entire athlete more stable and have a solid foundation, which to move on top of. Right. Right. I call it a foundation for rotation. The, the rotation comes as we move the stick across the body because there's a rotation uh, through the shoulders, through the torso. Um, 
but and then um as we move down there's rotation to move the stick and 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 move the body down okay um so the second tweak is to get the, the upper body the hands where they are strongest and that i can guarantee you you will find by just throwing the stick away and throwing your goalie in the cage and shooting some tennis balls at them without a stick right they will naturally come to this just like reactive positioning and that's all that they'll that's that's all there for your goalie to discover if they just put their stick down for a second okay take 100 shots and be like okay we're just gonna have some fun today your goalie will move a thousand times better i guarantee it okay um and then finally the you know so so um one of my goal my lacrosse goal university members this um uh this month like we were talking last week and this is a fantastic goalie and they are their club team is having seven on seven um fall ball indoors right like so in like in a hockey rink full-size lacrosse nets so six by six nets so not quite box but just field indoors and so that's cool field indoors is cool but what this goalie really needs is strength work the biggest thing that's going to make this goalie's improvement, and this is that's true for most goalies. So if your goalie's playing lacrosse like year round, um, it's not always the best choice. If you now, if your goalie is new and young and improving, uh, they can probably benefit from more lacrosse experience. However, if your goalie has a fair bit, if they've been playing lacrosse for like two or three seasons under their belts, uh, now's when they they know how to move. You know, they've they've. Um, they can probably benefit if you're doing an either or by spending time in the weight room, no matter what the age, then just more lacrosse. Okay. As, if it's an either or now, if you can do a both and fantastic. Okay. That's really important. Right. Um, so yeah. So did that help? Like, is that helpful? Because, uh, I just can't stand the wide stances and yes, Adam Rose to uh, Joel Rose, um, Adam Gittleman, you know, I'm a fan. Okay. Kyle Burnlor also a fan, uh, Brian Phipps. Um, I'm a fan. Um, I don't like Brian Phipps's depth, but um, but but in terms of foot position, uh, you'll see goalies getting, um, you know, the pro goalies. They're they'll bring their feet underneath them, right? Especially on shots, depending on where they're they're from in the field. But um, but you know, those are also adults, like men who have been training for a while. You know, Adam Gittleman is a phenomenal. Um, athlete in terms of diligence you know he does a lot of work i don't always agree with the work that he does i think he can be a little bit more strategic in the weight room uh but because there's goalies there's pro goalies that have emulated his work and i've been critical of that because i'm like that goalie doesn't need that kind of work they need other work and so but the point is is that is that you're seeing grown men who have the strength and ability to take a wider stance because that's their envelope but for a lot of young goalies, they don't have that same envelope. Or if they adopt that stance, they're stuck. Like they look just like that pro goalie, but they sure as shit don't move like them. Okay, and that's really important to understand. Okay, uh, really true for the girl. Re really true for the girls too. Okay, uh, really, really true for the girls too. Girls have a much narrower window uh, envelope with which to work, and the feet are under the hips, especially if the athlete has um, any excessive body weight. Like, and sorry, but. If you're chunky, you got junk in the trunk, your envelope is even narrower. Okay. So you can't adopt the wide stance. Okay. Uh, um, so you gotta be, gotta be careful about that. So if any questions there, you go ahead and post them in the, in the comments. Um, ben Stone, thank you. Uh, uh, really likes the simplicity of this too. Yep. There you go. Um, and yes, Joel Rose, I'm brilliant. Thank you. Totally kidding. Appreciate that comment though. Um, um, and Nathan Keegan on YouTube. Don't waste my time, dude. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening wherever you are. Do me a favor. Hit the like button if you like this and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. When you're ready, head on over to lacrossegoalieuniversity.com forward slash coaching so I can work with you and your goalie. And while you're at it, check out athletespecific.com to learn more about mental performance and high performance. You may not know this, but I work with athletes in a variety of sports. Lacrosse is my love, but man, I love athletes and the families who support them. So head on over to athletespecific.com, check it out. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.